God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Each and every one of you. God bless you. I am just so excited that God has allowed us to come together one more Thursday. I thank God for God being God, for God keeping, for God blessing. Oh, God is just a great and a mighty God. And it's just good when he allows the opportunity just, you know, to come together. So I thank God for you, for you. When those of you who log in, who um, listen to the truth for trendsetters, thank you so much. You don't have to do that. Thank you so much. It is a blessing to me to share, but it's a blessing when I know that you're listening. So thank you, each and every person that logs on. Thank you so much. God bless you. I see you coming on. Thank you so much, you know. And this year for Truth for Trendsetters, as I said to you last week, I'm doing something a little different. I'm going to allow whatever the truth is that I posted, which is truth number 28, I can bring about positive change. I'm going to allow that to be my thought for the entire month, so to speak. And last week, I did sort of an overview, I guess you could say. I talked about um, change in three different particular types of change. It was personal change, status change, and us being a change agent. God bless you. Those of you that are coming on, God bless you. And so I talked about those areas of change. And... I kind of want to get back to personal change, if you would uh, just allow me to just deal with personal change for a minute. Because I want to dig into it a little deeper and talk about habits, you know. Because in order for us to really make personal change, we're going to have to look at the habits and the, the things that we do and how we take on new habits and new thought patterns and things like that. And so I was listening, and God bless you, Mother, for coming on. God bless you. I was listening to my, you know, I listen to a few podcasts. I read a few, have a few apps. And on my youth version, I was watching and doing something that was talking about reading the Bible, you know, and how we should develop the habit and how we can go through and read the scriptures. And so in it, they brought up four particular points that dealt with habits. And I was like, this is perfect. I got to give them credit for the topic. Now I'm going to mix it with my own thing. I got to tell you that. I'll tell you what they said, but then I'm going to give you what God gave me. Okay. So I will share what they said, but I'm going to give you what God gave me. But it was just an excellent, I think, springboard for talking about making personal change and how we can develop and do habits that are going to help us. And the first point they said, they talked about was how to make a habit stick. How do you make a habit stick? God bless you. God bless you. How do you make a habit stick? Well, you know, they say link it to something you do consistently. You know how you do that. So you know that when you are riding the train, when you were taking the train to go to work, you could take those moments while you're on the train and read the Bible. So the train ride was a consistent thing that was done. You linked in reading the scriptures to that. Or maybe you're working and every day you know you're going to eat lunch. Well, a habit, if you want to exercise more, can be that you are then taking some of those days that you're going to eat lunch and go walk actually walk to the place where you're going to have lunch, pick up your lunch and walk back. So in other words, you're attaching something, you're linking something to what you do consistently. That helps you make a habit stick. So for example, maybe you log on to Facebook several times a day. Well, when you get ready to log on, after you log off, you're going to say, each time I'm going to get a little bit of exercise in, or I'm going to read a little bit every time I log on. Those are ways that you actually 
can help a habit to stick. You link it to something that you do consistently. I was, God bless you, God bless you. I was listening to a woman who was saying that, you know, she watches um, television an hour a day in the evening. So she got a rower. And so she started rowing as she watched her favorite show or her favorite movie so that she wasn't passively watching. She was actively doing something. So she connected her watching television to something she wanted to do consistently. So those are, that's one of the things you can do. But then the question that I wanted to do, okay, I might do it. I may stick it to something, but how do I make a habit out of it? How do I do that? So in order to make it automatic, because you know, once we started doing something, we want to do that thing automatically. So they say, don't complicate it, keep it simple, just do it. Well, I thought about that for myself. I thought about January marks my salvation anniversary. Thank God. Oh, I just thank God. I thank God that the Lord, 42 years ago, you know, I got saved in the month of January, 42 years ago. Bless the name of Jesus. The best thing that ever happened to me is my commitment to Christ. And I thank God for that. I really do. I thank him daily about that. And when I got saved, I really, really wanted to make a habit of praying every morning when I got up. I wanted to pray every morning when I got up. I wanted to get on my knees and say a prayer every morning when I got up. Well, I almost defeated myself in the process because I decided that I wanted to do 30 minutes, 30 minutes every day. Well, my days would go and sometimes my work schedule would fluctuate and, you know, I would get out of bed. I'd be running late and I would, you know, fall on my knees and, you know, my 30 minutes just kind of went out the door and I was utterly defeated in trying to do, trying to make this a habit for myself. I was utterly defeated in it. And the Lord actually spoke to me, even as a new convert and said, why don't you take yourself off the hook? Just spend time with me. Oh, isn't God good? Isn't God good? He said, just spend time with me. And so instead of me getting a mark to say, I got to do it this long, every day I got up, whether it was a minute, five minutes, seven minutes, two minutes, 10 minutes, I just started spending time with the Lord. And do you know that that habit of not complicating it, but basically keeping it simple, just keeping it simple, allowed me to make that automatic because I wanted it to be automatic. And it made it automatic so that, you know, it's something that I do daily. It's something that if I, regardless of where I am, regardless of what's going on in my life, I do that. And that was something that was developed in my walk, early in my walk, because I had a desire. I had a desire to make that a habit, but I set the bar. I was complicating it. I was making it difficult for myself. And sometimes we just have to keep it simple. You know, Nike has that expression that is actually wonderful. It says, just do it. Just do it. You know, that slogan is wonderful because, you know, it makes us know that we're capable of achieving what we want if we just get started, if we just do what we need to do. And even now, God bless you, when I am sharing with new converts, I just try to get them to come to church. I don't try to tack on too much on them. I want them to come to church. I want them to make that a habit of being around the saints, being comfortable with the people of God, make that a habit. But once I see that they have habit formed that, they will tell you that my next challenge for them, I kind of get to them and I challenge them. See if you can come four Sundays in a row. See if you can achieve that. 
you know, because sometimes they might come and then they miss five days, five Sundays, then they come. And so I celebrate with them that they're coming. I celebrate with them because I want them to achieve that habit. I want them to make it automatic. But once I see that there's some consistency, I challenge them, particularly this younger generation. They love a challenge. See if you can come four straight Sundays. And once they start doing that, then I allow them to set bars for themselves. But we have to just do it. We have to just commit to doing the things that we want to do. So keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't overburden. Until that habit forms, keep it simple. Don't complicate it. The other thing that they said was stay connected. Do what you're trying to do alongside somebody. And I'm going to add, they say do it along someone who cares or someone that's trusted. But I'm going to add this to it, but doesn't make an excuse for you. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, one of the reasons that I know about the development of my prayer life is because I wrote it in my journal. And I can go back to my journal 42 years I still journal, and I can go back to it and see my ups and my downs. I can actually see, like, this day, this is what I did, and then this day, this is what I did. That journal was an accountability for me. It was, it was allowing me to chart where I am and what I'm doing. And I could see my ups and downs and my inconsistency, but I also saw in that that I was growing that I was developing, that I was moving forward. And oftentimes it may be a journal, but we have to find ways to hold ourselves accountable. We have to stay connected to the thing we're trying to do. And oftentimes we do that through accountability, whether that is journaling or whether or not that is with someone. You know, you can find someone that's caring and trusting and you can share with them your goals and your desires and some of the things that, you know, you really want to achieve and allow them to walk with you throughout the process. Oh, that's really, that's really key. But I say let them be trusting and caring, but don't give excuses for you. And what do I mean by that? Well, I remember one time I, you know, was telling somebody what I wanted to do and how I wasn't achieving those things that I was doing. And they said to me, oh, you know, you got so much going on in your life. You're this, you're that, you're a first lady, you're this, you're that. You got so much going on. You Don't even worry about it. They love me and they care for me, but they were letting me off the hook too. Yes, I have a lot going on. You have a lot going on. But you want someone that's going to offer you and give you maybe something to think about to help you continue to progress along your journey. I also had on the other side of the spectrum, I remember I was sharing with someone how I wanted to achieve a weight goal. And they said to me, and this was years ago, and they said to me, please, you got the great job, you got a good husband, you got beautiful children, God's not going to give you everything. Don't worry about that. Just stay with the way you are. What? I don't need that either. I need to be able to go alongside of someone who cares and who's trusting, but is not going to let me off the hook. And a lot of times when it's about accountability, you need to find the same thing. You need to do the same thing. Find someone with interest. I like the fact that in Acts, and I am currently reading through the Bible. I am, you know, currently on that journey. And I'm in the book of Acts. And, you know, when I love it when Peter and John went together 
the Bible said. They were going to the temple to pray. The Bible says as they always did at the hour of prayer. In other words, these were two partners. These were two prayer partners that got together to say, we're going to go to the temple. We're going to do this. We're going to pray. You know, and that's okay to have someone who is like-minded or someone who has similar goals to be able to help you and assist you in your own journey. You know, and you need to have that to allow that accountability to be a part of your life. There are people that care. There are people that are trusted to be able to hold you accountable in a loving and caring manner to the things that God has placed upon your heart to do. You can do that thing. And then finally, and this one I really like, make what you're doing feel new. That's what they said. Make what you're doing feel new. Switch up your routine. Now, I already told you I'm reading through the Bible in this year. Now, when I say a year, I've all, I've read through the Bible before. So I know my year reading through the Bible is probably about 14 months, 14 or 15 months. I'm reading through the Bible. I've read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. I've also read through the Bible starting at the New Testament, reading that, then going to the Old. But this year I'm switching it up. And I've decided to do it alphabetically. So Amos and Acts, Chronicles and Corinthians. I'm doing it alphabetically. So sometimes you have to switch up what you're doing to make it feel new and fresh. But This is what God gave me to get ready because God will shake up your routine. God's going to shake up even your routine. And I want you to focus on this for a minute. I want you to really hone in on this because he'll breathe life into your habits because he doesn't want your habits just to become rituals. What did I say? He's going to bring Breathe life. He shakes it up. He breathes life into your habits because he doesn't want your habits to become rituals. And that's something that, of course, I've learned and I have to learn on the natural side that my habits and, you know, my disciplines, you know, that God shakes them up. And I'm going to get back to that in a second. But I understand that on the spiritual side, because spiritual disciplines, you know, reading our Bible, fasting, praying, we only have to think about the Pharisees for a minute, right? That they made these disciplines ritualistic, and as a result, it became dry and rigid and legalistic. And the Pharisees, you know, became unaccepting of the newness and of the new things that God brings. God brings new things. You know, the Bible lets us know that there are new mercies every day, every day. Every day is a new day. And God brings newness to our lives on a daily basis if we allow him to do that. And, you know, I want that. I want that freshness. I want that new that God wants to do. And so even when it comes to change and, you know, personal change in our lives, in order to ensue personal change, we got to develop some disciplines and we may have to develop some new habits of doing things. But don't get so rigid to know or to allow that God's not going to shake up even those habits that you form, because he wants to breathe life into them. He doesn't want them to become burdensome down. Peter and John, they were going up into, you know, the temple. That was their daily routine, right? To go to pray. Did not God shake that up? (laughs) Did not God shake up their routine? When you think that they, think about this for a minute. When they went, God shook it up. There was a man there, you know, that was asking for arms, silver and gold have I none, but such I have give out thee. Rise up and walk. God shook that up. He brought, breathed the life into what was a routine, perhaps habit for them. And God will do that to us even. God will breathe life and shake up those habits and those things that we have. But, you know, for me, I understood that on the spiritual side, 
But on the natural side, I seem to have problems accepting that. I seem to have problems because for me, for me, you know, on the natural, it seems like when God would shake up my routine, you know, I would develop, you know, I want to develop a habit. I'm getting this. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It seems like when God would shake up my routine, it was difficult for me to get back into my routine. It was difficult for me to get back into what I was doing. Now, just think Peter and John going to the temple. God shook up. Do you think they stopped their daily prayer? No, of course not. They didn't stop their daily prayer. It might have shifted, but it did not stop them. You know, (laughs) I see sometimes Missionary Gail Thomas on on my Thursdays. And Missionary Thomas, one time about eight years ago, in a very simple conversation, she probably doesn't even remember it. We were having a conversation about habits and change. And she asked me, she said, what is your plan? What is your plan? And you know what? I thought about it, but I should have thought more about it. Because in the midst of habit planning, you know, it seemed like my world just turned upside down for me. You know, my parents moved in with me. My work schedule changed. I was promoted. I had this. I had that going on. Different things happened. And as a result, instead of embracing the change did, and allow God to breathe life into the habits that I had. I fell into a rabbit hole of, you know, habit breakers and failures. That's not what God has. Even when you, even when we develop habits and life comes along (laughs) and things happen, you know, your schedule changes, you got health issues, you're on the brink of collapse and failure, different things seem like they just throw up in your face. That's not for you to go down the black hole of throwing away and abandoning those habits. It's just the time and opportunity that God is wanting to breathe life into you. So you can't look at it like that. You have to look at it not like failure. You can't just stop saving money because your job goes out. Or you may just be able to save 50 cents. But you could still save. You can't just stop working out. You can't just stop eating right. You can't just stop praying the way you used to. You just can't stop tithing. You can't just stop believing God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Realize that God is breathing life into you so that you don't allow these habits that you form to become ritualistic in your life, become ritualistic and legalistic. So that you become rigid and not able to flow with God himself. God got newness for you every day. God has new things, new experiences. And he wants to be able to allow you to experience these new things. To go where he's sending you. To be able to be where he wants you to go. Glory to God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. My supervisor always talks about how blessed are the flexible because they're not going to be bent out of shape. God wants you to be able to flow under the anointing of where he's going with you. Even when it comes to developing habits in your life, it's not for you to become rigid. It's not for you to become real uh, legalistic. It's for you to be able to achieve a goal, but know that at any moment, at any time, God wants to breathe life into that. And that may toss things up in the air for you. That may, that may allow, you know, your whole cart to be thrown out of whack. But when it falls, you find ways to get back and do not allow that to stop you from reaching your goal. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't go down the rabbit hole of failures. Don't go down that rabbit hole. Allow God brings a breathe of life into our rituals to help us arrive at your new destiny in faith with him 
See, the Pharisees, you know, they they got stuck on themselves. I read the Bible so many times. I fast so many days a week. I do that. I do that. You know, I'm at the gym nine times. You're not at the gym. I eat the right thing. No, 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 no. God, he will shake up your apple cart because he wants to breathe life into your rituals to help you arrive at your new destination, but full of faith in him so that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it was God. It was God. It was God that brought me through. And even in the midst, it's God that helps me to continue along my journey to get exactly where God has me to go. Phew! My goodness! I told you these couple, I promise you I will not talk this long in the future. But I want us to deal with change. Because you know what? In order for us to reach our personal goals, or the status change God has for us. The status change God has. God has a status change for some of you. He's going he's gonna to change your entire status. God has personal change for you. God is going to make some of us change agents. But you don't want to get there and get realist, ri ritualistic, hardened, like you did it yourself. You didn't. It was nobody but God working through you working through you to allow you to get there. So we want to embrace change. We want to embrace change. We want to be there. Thank God for you. And I just want you to repeat with me wherever you are. I can bring about positive change in my personal life. That's what we're dealing with in our personal life. I can bring about positive change in my personal life. Why? Because I, I'm going to speak about myself now. You can speak about yourself. Can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. That strengthens me. We can do all things. But it has to be through Christ. It has to be through Christ. It's not my own thing. My favorite scripture when I speak, is not enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that the faith of the hearer will not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. I want things to be resonated through the power of God. Oh, it's not me. You can, and you should. If I say something that is a blessing, you should tell me. And I will grab hold to it and I will honor it. And I'm thankful. But I understand that it is God working through me in every avenue of my life, not just on the spiritual level, but in the natural as well. So I thank and praise God for you listening. I thank God for you. But know that you can bring about positive change in your personal life, whatever your requests are. And if you need me to pray with you, I always say just direct message me. Direct message me. And I will pray. I'll add you to my prayer list. I'll add you to that journal that I keep, that I pray. I'll add you to it because God is just a good God. And I am going to be so excited to see what's going to happen with you and I. With you and I. Oh, like I said last week, it's going to be a lot that happens this year. It's going to be a bag full. But God is going to be able to take us through to achieve the things he wants us to achieve. And some of you, he's going to elevate you to a whole new stratosphere. He's going to do it so that he can get the glory out of it. God bless you. I love you. We're talking about change. We're talking about change. God bless you. And I hope to see you soon. God bless you. God bless you.